Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the unrealistic prices that Magic the Gathering wants you to play, pay now. Now, you know, I have a good job. My girlfriend has a good job. We both make decent income. We like to travel. We like to eat. We like to do fun stuff together. But even our budget, which is way above, I would assume, the median, so we're a multiple of the median of income of the American family isn't enough to buy $500 or $400 boxes. These boxes are too expensive. I really don't care what's in them, and that's what I suggest you look at as well. It's It cannot possibly be worth $504. Now, when you take a look at the older boxes, they have done really bad. They have not, I mean... It's one thing, you know, we enjoy a little bit of wine. We don't drink that much, but you buy a bottle of wine 10 years later, it becomes a little bit more expensive, but you're you're buying it to enjoy the bottle of wine. You, the majority of people I know, they're not buying it to um, hoard or to uh, later sell because you actually don't know if, hey, the wine person kept it in the cooler the whole time, was it ever taken out? There's uh, a lot of uh, wine dealers that dilute it and, and, and so on. So it's better for you to buy it when it was a reasonable price. We actually went to Trader Joe's, bought a $67 bottle of champagne, bought uh, a few of them, maybe half a case, and we're just putting it for later drink, to later to drink, not because we hope it goes up to $100, $200. This is different. Uh, when people buy these boxes, they're holding on to these boxes. And these boxes have very, very little value today. And let me explain why. It used to be that box opening channels, like uh, back in the day, Jeremy Hambly from the quartering now, he would do box openings. It would be fun to see older boxes, right? Because the older box was something that you remember seeing. Now, you can see the older box in Ravnica Remastered. Like, why buy a box of Ravnica for, what, 1000 1500 when you can see the exact same cards in anime waifu edition, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense. Um, the secondary market has been absolutely, you know, they give Hasbro Wizard of Coast credit. They figured this out. Eventually they figured it out that, hey, they can take a big chunk. Why should Ravnica booster boxes be this expensive when we can just reprint the exact same cards, throw, a, throw actually a better retro frame on it. And uh, have more demand for it. Why make new sets when we can just do Universe Beyond and that's our new creative direction? Uh, why, why spend the money, right? So anyway, back to the, I think a lot of people are waking up to this idea that this stuff is not, it's just cardboard. There is so much more important stuff in life than cardboard. And if I were to be 100% frank with you, it's, it's kind of scary how much money we all, I at least for me, that I have in this shit. And it is shit. You know, I, I view these boxes as absolute garbage because they're just going to do a remaster. So, number one, the box opening, you, you open a box of this shot, shit, like you open a box of Pharaohs Beyond De Death, maybe we get 100 views on this channel. You got to open the new product. Uh, obviously, I can prove this to you because whatnot is everyone opening new product. It is no one opening old product, especially Kaldenheim, you know, War of the Spark. Who the hell is opening that stuff right now? So number one, uh, more, number two, draft. People say, oh, you know, I want to have this box, so uh, maybe I can draft it one day. And uh, You can draft a remaster set, and it will feel way better than drafting this because you'll get at least some value. A remaster set essentially is what we would call a block, which is uh, free sets, right? What was Time Spiral Remastered? Well, it was the Time Spiral block. So what was uh, Ravnica Remastered? What was Dominaria Remastered? I mean, it's a block. So it's like we took the free most powerful, the free, we went back in time, took a whole block, free sets, and combined all the most powerful cards, threw them new borders, animes, and now that's your draft format. So how expensive would it be to buy Time Spiral, Planar Chaos, and there was like another set I'm forgetting. I think Time Spiral, what is that? $2,000 a box, and the Planar Chaos probably also $2,000. Probably $6,000 to have a decent draft, right? And those free sets, if that's what you wanted to do. 
I fully expect Innistrad to remastered very soon because Innistrad was a popular set. And Innistrad would have Innistrad, Iverson Restored, and uh, the other set that I'm forgetting right now. So there was the mid set, Dark Ascension. And they'll have all the most powerful mythics, they'll have different border frames, they'll have probably chase cards, they'll throw in Mana Crypt because why not? We'll just throw Mana Crypt into these things, right? Even though they don't make any sense. Yeah, what I'm uh, suggesting to you right now is should be pretty obvious to everyone is uh, there's no reason to buy these boxes and hold them. If you buy them and open them, yeah, I mean, it's $500. But if you buy them and hold them and expect them to go up, the reason that they are so expensive is because people view them as an investment. I can prove this. Um, why would you buy a case or several cases of this product? You're never going to open them, right? You're trying to resell them, of course. That's it. Like, you know, it, it's very different from the wine community I'm part of now. We went to a wine class. It was fun. Uh, they're not looking to... They, you, sometimes we can trade wine. We can trade champagne. But we're not looking to, like, buy four cases of the same champagne. Right? We, we, we're not in the market of reselling champagne. And, other, and without our reputation, people are not going to trust you. No one in the wine market, like, no, not the individual Timmy's, if you will, are buying eight cases or four cases or even one case of one. We love that champagne at Trader Joe's. We had, it was really, really good. We both enjoyed it a lot. We bought half a case. That's probably the most we'll ever buy of any particular wine product. Like, it's not this. It's not people buying cases of $500 booster boxes from Alpha Investment. It's not. You're buying it because you want to enjoy, right? You want to enjoy um, thing. I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't really know what to say. Like, if a case is twelve boxes or twelve um, bottles of wine, and you buy six bottles of wine, you're, you're, you're probably going to drink it. You buy two bottles, you're probably going to drink it. You're probably going to enjoy it. Have a nice uh, dinner, and you know, you enjoy that champagne, and it's, it's good. If you're buying, let's call it um, 10 cases, 120 bottles of wine, it's like, who the hell are you? Like, you know, what, what's going on here? You know, like, who would buy that, like, for, for themselves? No, no matter how much you enjoy it, it's not, like, special. So it's not special, okay? It's, you're not, you're not buying it. When you, once you start buying cases or something, you're not buying it because you enjoy it. You're buying it because you're trying to make money flipping it. Because that's volume, right? You're trying to make money via volume. So anyway, my main takeaway from this is, you know, this set is really, really gross. Um, these two sets, right, at five hundred and four hundred dollars a pop. Just say no. You can buy singles. You thank me a lot later because, as an investment, no. I mean, they say, "Oh, Lord of Rings, good." Try selling them. Like the liquidity of a set after it goes stale, if you will, is almost zero. Anyway, I guess.